here we are, staring into the bleak face of a world obsessed with itself, people addicted to their phones. Are we losing touch? In today's day and age, humanity is craving another artist like Jim Morrison in The Doors. More and more, we are prone to avalanches of societal pressures that are driving us all into states of extreme neuroticism. News media 24-7, largely created to keep us scared and upset with one another. Social media left and right, where we're pummeled with advertisements, social pressures to fit in and be liked and be the center of attention. We're out of touch with our humanity, obsessed with fitting in, and most of us are, if we're honest, pretty lost. Who are we? What is going on in the world? And can you even write a meaningful song or create meaningful art if you're unaware or turn a blind eye to this state of affairs? In the 1960s, the doors emerged on the LA scene in times not too unlike the times of today, with their music and lyrics being all about psychic exploration, penetrating the deeper layers of consciousness and what it means to be human. The band, named after Aldous Huxley's book, The Doors of Perception, which was an evaluation of psychedelic drugs as facilitators of mystical insight, the Doors sought to open the minds of their audience members and listeners beyond the ordinary confines of repressive societal norms. In the mid-60s, the U.S. was smack dab in the middle of civil rights movements, women's rights movements, outrage over the Vietnam War, movements for peace and social justice. A shift was occurring in the American psyche and paradigm about what the American dream is all about, a rejection of the established social order. Doors' music echoed in the minds of the progressive generation that longed for change. Morrison's lyrics were an invitation to expansion beyond the antiquated views of the time, an exploration of the bounds of human consciousness. Lost in a Roman wilderness of pain, and all the children are insane, all the children are insane, waiting for the summer rain. There's danger on the edge of town, ride the king's highway. Weird scenes inside the gold mine, ride the highway west. Ride the snake, ride the snake to the lake, the ancient lake. Doors keyboardist Ray Manzarek described how Jim Morrison was the reincarnation of the Greek god Dionysus. And Jim existed to take us on a psychic voyage. He was a roadman a shaman, a madman, and a sensitive poet. In Greek mythology, Dionysus was the son of the god Zeus, but he was born of a human mother. He was a god of wine, winemaking, fertility, ritual madness, theater, and ecstasy, but he also had a human component to him, and this human godlike nature was symbolic of his duality and to simultaneously arouse, inspire, and captivate, but also to bring about destruction, temptation, and even the eating of flesh. In the case of Jim Morrison, this Dionysian force existed in the chaotic ravings of this genius madman inspired by his voracious appetite for the darker realms of literature and philosophy, manic states of ecstasy, lust, drugs and alcohol use, and psychic explorations themselves. During shows, his staged theatrics sought to arouse his audience to experience and feel beyond the suppressive confines of ordinary everyday society, in some cases going to pretty obscene extremes and getting himself into trouble. But his objective was to awaken and arouse the audience, to strike a nerve, to stir the senses, to wake them up. His words painting images he saw in his mind, often observing painful truths about the world around us. Driving down your freeway, midnight alleys roam, cops in cars, the topless bars, never saw a woman so alone, so alone, so alone, so alone. Motel, money, murder, madness, let's change the mood from glad to sadness. Morrison just wouldn't sugarcoat it. According to an interview with him, he said, quote, I like ideas about the breaking away or overthrowing of established order. 
I'm interested in anything about revolt, disorder, chaos, especially activity that seems to have no meaning at all. It seems to me to be the road to freedom. External revolt is a way to bring about internal freedom. Rather than starting inside, I start outside, reach the mental through the physical." End quote. In another interview with Tony Thomas from CBS in 1970, the two were discussing society in general, and Morrison noted that he viewed his role as a performer as opening the consciousness of the masses, of people otherwise trapped in what seemed to be a state of watching life go by on their TV sets. He just simply couldn't fathom the notion that people would rather see life go by on a box in their living room when real life was actually happening down the street in their very own town. Morrison's lyrics were very sensuous as well. He exhibited fascinations with sensory pleasures, touch, sex, and altered states of reality. To many, Jim was a difficult person to work with. He suffered from a lack of self-control, trouble with the law, and he was constantly under the influence of drugs and alcohol. But he had this incredible ability to arouse a crowd and lead people into psychic states and exploring areas of their consciousness that were otherwise dormant. To Morrison, these states were a way towards liberation and an internal freedom from really the tyranny of societal normalcy and the basic status quo. Morrison explored topics that others would never dare touch. He was, for instance, fascinated with murder and hitchhikers. There's a killer on the road. His brain is squirming like a toad. Take a long holiday, let your children play. If you give this man a ride, sweet family, you will die. Killer on the road. But Morrison made his point. For as quirky as he was, he left his mark. In the end, his message was about breaking through. And in his era, society was craving change. Doors music was about overcoming the tyranny of conformity and embracing the full expression of life, a celebration of what it means to be human in a 360-degree sense, the good, the bad, the ugly, an acceptance of the bad, in fact, as a necessary companion to the good, the idea that without the full range of experience, life is plastic and means nothing, that there's no reason to hide. It was about breaking through. You know the day destroys the night. Night divides the day. Tried to run, tried to hide. Break on through to the other side. Break on through to the other side. Break on through to the other side. In our current apocalyptic and dystopian world, things are strangely reminiscent of Morrison's time. All of us are to some extent in need of a plunge into this Dionysian to explore areas of consciousness that are not normal, that might get us into trouble, perhaps, but allow us to express ourselves fully, whether that be through just the words that we say, perhaps sexually, to indulge our senses, ultimately to explore the chaos, the disorder of reality, as it interfaces with efforts to preserve order. In many ways, there is promise of healing in this pursuit of ourselves and our world. What have they done to the earth? What have they done to our fair sister? Ravaged and plundered and ripped her and bit her, stuck her with knives in the side of the dawn, and tied her with fences and dragged her down. On a cautionary note, as you explore these areas of your consciousness, beware of the dangers of sinking too deeply into these states, especially getting too deep into psychedelic exploration with drugs and alcohol. Morrison is, after all, a member of the 27 Club, dying quite young. He is greatly missed to this day, but in many ways his legacy lives on in the songs he wrote and the lyrics of his short-lived but powerful career. The crystal ship is being filled, a thousand girls, a thousand thrills, a million ways to spend your time. When we get back, I'll drop a line. So where does this leave you? Do your lyrics strike a nerve? Do you have the Dionysian side that wants to come out and investigate those deeper, darker, underexplored sides of your existence and your consciousness? The world currently is craving more meaningful art, works that speak to the depths of the soul, that invite change. So where does this leave you?
What will you write next?